This video is about how you can find scope and how to whittle it into something manageable without becoming paralyzed by the potential complexity and enormity of a topic. I'm going to demonstrate how I would go about doing this with the topic and how you can use the software that you have already purchased in NUR501 called MindView to help you with your thinking. The goal is to ex help you explore a phenomenon in order to cut it into smaller pieces so that you can determine where to focus your search for evidence. Here are a few tips. First, there is, really isn't a wrong or right way other than the method you use should help you, not hinder your thinking. It should have some type of logic. You may need to do this more than once. And finally, if you start too big, discover that you need to take just a branch of your thinking and zoom in on that a bit. Then you may do that again and again until you find your focus. It's like a Google map where you start with a map of the United States where you see where your state is located relative to others, but you can't see where you need to go or how. So you begin to zoom into your state and you begin to uncover cities and towns and roads. But if you're trying to find out how to go from one town to the next, say 300 miles apart, you may need to zoom in even more. If you're wanting to navigate within a city, you zoom in further. If you want to find a re restaurant or a city, you go further. But if you zoom in too far, you lose your perspective. So we're going to use mapping much in the same way to figure out how to scope a problem. Whether I'm working with faculty who are developing a question for a systematic review, or I'm trying to hone in my own questions for primary research, or I'm working with students and nursing staff on evidence implementation projects, one of the first issues of the project is trying to find a scope that will provide both an important and significant answer, but is also feasible and doable. What is feasible depends on resources, the skills of those involved, and in course, time. I'm a big fan of using tools that allow me to surface how I can conceptualize a problem, an idea, etc. We asked you to purchase MindView because it is really helpful and easy to use. So I'm going to show you how I used it to narrow my focus related to my ph phenomenon, dyspnea in patients with COPD. The first step is the easiest. You just put the main thing in the middle. I know that it's really important to have a solid definition of a concept. So here I use the American Thoracic Society and European Respiratory Society's consensus definition of dyspnea. They defined it as a subjective experience of breathing discomfort that consists of qualitatively distinct sensations that vary in intensity. So I'll keep that definition sort of hovering over my map so that I don't stray from what the concept is. You can do that simply by clicking on insert and then a floating comment and then you fill in the box and you can move it around anywhere in the map that you want to. Um, since it's floating, it can be um, moved around. Since Disney is in my wheelhouse, I happen to have a good idea about how to begin deconstructing my concept. But if I didn't, I'd first think about what I know from my clinical experience, but then I would have a look in the literature for a good summary, a state of the science uh, kind of article to help me create these categories. I add categories just by double clicking the concept. So in this map, um, when I started with dyspnea, this box, I would just double click it and you'll see here's an idea that floats up there. I'm going to get rid of that because I've already built out my map and uh, I just need to select it and hit my delete button. And there it goes. Um, I can do the add as many ideas as I want to, but you don't want your map to get uh, right away too complex. So here I've added the components that I think uh, relate to dyspnea, either as etiologies or uh, impact. And so here you'll see physiologic factors, physical factors, psychological factors, and social factors are sort of the four main things that uh, I wanted to relate to dyspnea. Then I went back to each major heading and started to build those ideas out. 
uh, the physiologic contributors, the physical factors, etc. So let's have a look at what I did with the physiologic. So I'll explode the ideas that I came with there. And you see that I have respiratory mechanics are related to the physiologic um, relationship of dys dyspnea, respiratory muscle function, breathing pattern, low capacity and balance, peripheral muscle dysfunction, and protein calorie malnutrition all may have some physiologic relevance to dyspnea and COPD. Then I can take those factors and break them out further. So with respiratory mechanics, you'll remember that there are both static and dynamic respiratory mechanics that lead to uh, static properties lead to hyperinflation and dynamic to airway resistance. Uh, there are two main factors with respiratory muscle function, and that's the strength and the endurance of those muscles. And you can see uh, how I've built these each out. Then I wanted to focus on treatments. Um, they should relate back to those factors that contribute um, to the physiologic. Uh, there are other trap treatments besides the pharmacologic and rehabilitative. But rehabilitation is where I have done most of my background and where my interest was when I began this map. So then I broke rehabilitation um, down into four main treatment modalities. There's inspiratory muscle training, cardiovascular endurance training, breathing pattern retraining, and upper extremity training. Then with the inspiratory muscle training, I knew there were three main ways to go about doing that. There's threshold loading, resistive devices, and normal capning hypermnia. And then with threshold loading, um, there are um, dose and um, factors related to how you go about doing that threshold loading. And that's the level of the load, the duration of the training, the frequency of the training, and potential breathing pattern influence on how that threshold loading works. So how you go about constructing this map will in uh, pretty much entirely depend on, on what your concept is. Now the last thing I wanted to show you are these linkages you see here that light up. These are um, how I linked this, three, this particular treatment of inspiratory muscle training back to uh, the physiologic factors that relate to whether or not, uh, potentially whether or not inspiratory muscle training works. So does insp inspiratory muscle training impact respiratory muscle function in terms of strength and endurance? Um, does inspiratory muscle training relate to breathing pattern uh, in either direction? So breathing pattern might influence how well inspiratory muscle training works and inspiratory muscle training may have impact on more effective breathing patterns. Those are all sort of hypothetical questions. Uh, similarly, maybe it enhances um, the load capacity and balance or maybe it makes it worse. So these are linkages that um, you can make uh, through the connection function. You just click on uh, connection and then click on the concept where you want to start and end that linkage. So now I have a very uh, comprehensive map. Now what? Well, I may want to understand the effectiveness of treatments like inspiratory muscle training or pharmacological therapy, or I may want to understand the experience of dyspnea in a certain context or an experience that relates to dyspnea. For example, the experience of how dyspnea leads to role change in the context of family. The map helps me isolate these and other questions. So it creates a bit of a funnel where I start with a big concept like dyspnea in patients with COPD, narrow to interventions for physiologic dysfunction, to interventions related to respiratory muscle function, to finally a specific question for searching. So from this map, I can pose questions like, in patients with moderate to severe COPD, what is the experience of changing role within the family? That would have emerged out of the uh, social um, branch where I looked at role changes and dysfunction as they relate to family. Or I might have had an effectiveness question that comes out of uh, the inspiratory muscle training therapy. So I may have posed the question, in patients with moderate to severe COPD, 
What is the effect of inspiratory muscle training using threshold loading versus sham, which is a placebo approach to training, on usual and exertional dyspnea? I will admit that the better you know the general area, the easier this all is. So you are learning as you're learning how to come up with questions and how to scope your area of concern. I recommend concentrating on something you are very familiar with and very interested in.